Okay, so today we can study the chapter, the poem written by John Dryden, a song for St. Cecilia's Day. So in the previous class, we have seen that John Dryden was a poet, dramatist and critic, a very important literary figure of uh, the 17th century uh, English literature. And uh, he was the poet laureate from 1668 up until 1688. And then he lost the position. Then we discussed the uh, ode, ode as a kind of poem that is addressed to an object or a person. Now, the poem that we have to learn today is a song for St. Cecilia's Day. It was written in 1687. Uh, especially, it was written to be sung on 22nd November 1687. So in the introductory class last week, I had told you that uh, Saint Cecilia was the patron saint of music or she is considered, Saint Cecilia is considered to be the patron saint of music. And her feast happens to be on the uh, 22nd of November. So this song is written in the form of an ode. At the same time, it has been composed uh, and performed as a song, as a musical piece by several musicians, including George Handel. Okay, so a song for St. Cecilia's Day was actually written to be performed or to be sung on the feast of St. Cecilia that was in 1687, 22nd November. Okay, so this is a song that celebrates, uh, glorifies the uh, Saint Cecilia. Now, who was Saint Cecilia? She was a Christian martyr. Hmm? She was a Christian martyr and she is considered to be the patron saint of music. She is believed to have invented the organ. Now, you know that uh, organ is usually associated with church music, right? So, in the previous class, I had told you that uh, Saint Cecilia is believed to have invented the organ. So uh, naturally, this poem, because we are discussing or we see that the poem is addressed to the patron saint of music, we can see that this song itself is about music, is about the power of music to uh, relate to different emotions. So in the last class, actually, I had given you a slight uh, summary, a little bit of a summary of what this poem was about to be. Today, we'll uh, deal that in detail. Okay. So, uh, and I had old, uh, already told you that two odes, similar odes are written by Dryden. One is a song for St. Cecilia's Day that you have to learn. And also there is another poem that is uh, Alexander's Feast. Okay, so two poems are written by John Dryden in uh, uh, the form of the ode. Okay, out of that we have to learn a song for St. Cecilia's Day. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I had, uh, even though I had uh, mentioned you mentioned to you the structure, uh, I'll once again uh, repeat it. Uh, so there is one stanza. What you can already see on the screen is the first stanza. Okay, there is a big stanza. That's the first stanza. Okay, stanza one uh, deals with uh, how universe was created in the Christian belief and how that is related to music and harmony. The second stanza is about another person from the Bible, another biblical figure called Jubal. Now, from the third up until the seven stanzas, each stanza has reference to one musical instrument. Okay, different different musical instruments are mentioned in each of the stanza. And then finally, there is the reference uh, to Saint Cecilia and how she and her music is above every other instruments. And finally, there is a grand chorus. So this is how. Uh, the poem, A Song for St. Cecilia's Day, is structured. Okay, stanza one, stanza two, up until stanza seven. And then there is a grand chorus. So you can see that the whole poem itself is written in the form of a song. And as such, it can be performed. It was composed and performed as well. Okay, so today we'll see the first uh, stanza, stanza one of St. Cecilia's Day. Uh, 1687. So the poem begins by uh, referring to the Christian myth of creation. Okay, so what is the Christian myth of creation? Christians believe from the book of Genesis. Uh, in Malayalam, we say Ulpati Pustagam. In the book of Genesis, uh, 
we see that God created the universe. God created everything that we see around us, including the plants, animals, the light, everything, and human beings. Okay. So one day, God uh, created light, and then he separated light from darkness. The next day, he created the land, separating it from the sea or water. Then he created the sun, moon, and the stars. Then another day, he created the plants. The next day, he created animals uh, of the land and the sea. Likewise, he created, he took five days to create the whole uh, world. And on the next day, he created man. Okay, he uh, God molded the shape of man. It is said in the Bible that God created man in his own image. Okay, and then after creating the man, so everything is now uh, done. All the creation has been done, and on the seventh day, God rested. So this is how Christians believe uh, how the universe or how the world was created. So this is the belief. Now. Um, this poem refers to this Christian myth of creation, how God has created the universe. Okay, So actually, the Bible starts, uh, the first verse of the Bible says that the world was full of chaos. Hmm? Chaos, C-H-A-O-S. Chaos in the world, there is no shape, there is no symmetry, there is no structure. That's what we mean by chaos. There was nothing, there was no structure, there was no coherence, there was no order. Everything was dark and chaotic. This is the first verse of the Bible actually. So from chaos, from disorder, God created order. Okay, God created an orderly structure for the world from actually disorder. Okay, so he a sort of he created a sort of a harmony in the world. Okay, now harmony itself is a musical term. Harmony is a musical term. Uh, you can uh, you can um, refer to a an orchestra of different instruments, hmm? several instruments in an orchestra. Uh, they create a beautiful music through harmony okay there may be a flute there may be a guitar there may be a violin there may be a piano there may be a saxophone so many instruments may be there in an orchestra all of them have their own particular uh, musical quality some may be stringed instruments some may be wind instruments some may be percussion instruments like a tabla or a drum different different musical quality is there for different different musical instruments but when in an orchestra when everything comes together it shows harmony everything goes together so this is the concept uh, in the first stanza where the poet says that god created the universe from chaos through the musical concept of harmony okay so this is one concept that you can see in the first stanza okay we'll see the first stanza in detail i'll read the first stanza recited from harmony from heavenly harmony the universal frame began when nature underneath a heap of jarring atoms lay and could not heave her head the tuneful voice was heard from high arise ye more than dead then cold and hot and moist and dry in order to their stations leap and music's power obey from harmony from heavenly harmony this universal frame began from harmony to harmony through all the compass of the notes it it ran the diapason closing full in man okay so around 14, 15 lines are there in this first stanza. It talks about the creation of the world. So we'll see it line by line. So from, from the first line itself, we can see the references to harmony. And I've already told you what is harmony and what is the musical concept of harmony. From harmony, from heavenly harmony, this universal frame began. So how did this universal frame begin the whole visible universe was created from harmony 
what sort of a harmony from heavenly harmony so this particular um, idea of harmony was not a human was not a mortal was not a an earthly harmony it was a heavenly harmony so the first two lines refer to the creation to the beginning of the universe the visible world hmm? the visible world began or was created through heavenly harmony meaning the musical power of god of heavens okay when nature underneath a heap of jarring atoms lay so in the third and the fourth lines this is a reference to the chaos i was telling you a little bit before i told you that the bible refers to or the christian belief refers to the first idea of the world as chaotic disorderly bhoomi paalayitte oru orderum illada kedannirunnu this is how the bible refers to the first condition the state of universe okay nature underneath a heap of jarring atoms lay shows the chaos what is heap in malayalam we say kumbaram what is a heap it does not have any order it does not have any arrangement you just dump things one over the other and you get a heap right so nature was just a heap of jarring atoms there was no order there was no structure there was no uh, harmony in nature in the universe and where was nature actually it was under a heap of jarring atoms kore adhigam kooti kumbaramai kidakkuna kore adhigam atoms inde adiyil thala pokkan aagada kidakkuna prakruti nature underneath a heap of jarring atoms lying without being able to heave her head okay look at the fifth line could not heave her head so you can see that nature is personified nature you can see capital n there so the n capital shows that it is a person and nature is shown to be a woman ha huh? there's a personification of nature showing that nature is lying underneath a jar a heap of jarring atoms not possible for uh, lifting her head high and in this condition in this stressful disorderly condition there was something that was heard from up high what was that a tuneful voice was heard from high arise more than dead and on one fine moment a tuneful voice was heard from the heavens uh, from the high from the power of god there was a musical voice that uh, announced okay nature stop lying there underneath the heap of jarring atoms come out come and uh, lift your head and come out arise e more than dead now this is the musical tone or musical voice that comes from god or the creative power telling nature to lift its head from the dead state underneath the jar heap of jarring atoms and to come out okay so this is the first stanza so this shows uh, the biblical or the christian reference to the creation how the universe was chaotic disorderly unstructured and how the tuneful voice of god told nature to throw it away and come out come out pushing through the heap of jarring atoms pushing through the chaos okay so this is the idea of creation bringing order and harmony to chaos all the matter in the universe was believed to be chaotic in the beginning and it was given some order and shape through the heavenly harmonious music of heavens or god now you can also already you have already seen the reference to the heap of jarring atoms right so that refers to the pythagorean doctrine okay like you've heard of pythagoras right pythagoras the pythagorean theorem and all you have learned in mathematics hmm? so uh, the pythagorean theory of creation is collaborated here it is drawn along with the christian myth of creation to show uh, the idea that god created the universe through music okay now let's continue then cold and hot and moist and dry in order to their stations leap and music's power obey okay 
just like a magician calls forward uh, certain things from nowhere uh, imagine a magician um, flicking his wand his magical wand mandravadi the magical wand flicking it and uttering a spell and from nowhere a flower comes or from nowhere a lady appears imagine that uh, such a magical appearance of certain things happen cold hot moist and dry these are the elements panja bhoodangal ennu nammal malayalathile parayum cold stands for air hot stands for fire moist stands for water dry stands for earth so you can see the four elements being mentioned here okay whenever god flicked his hand uh, from nowhere fire came from nowhere air came from nowhere moist water came and from nowhere earth came and they came and went in the direction that god pointed his finger to okay so just like a parent or a teacher or a shepherd uh, leads their children or the sheep towards their uh, destination just like that god told the air to go there and the air went there god told the land to be set apart it went there god told the uh, sea to go somewhere and it went there and settled there right so just like magic it happened hmm? what happened cold and hot and moist and dry in order to their stations leap hmm? put the second line in a reverse order then cold and hot and moist and dry leap in order to their stations leap to jump hmm? leap here jump here upon you can see that each of the elements are the fire the air the earth and the water started leaping and running to their destinations wherever the seat was allotted by god they went there and music's power obey so it is not actually mentioned uh, that uh, the power of god but it's mentioned as power of music huh? so uh, actually this poem is written even though it's in a it's in a christian context yet you can see that the uh, the reference is to music as such right so the creation of universe the creation of elements uh, is shown to be uh, referring to the music's power the elements went to their particular allotted seats and locations by and they were obeying the power of music again there is a repetition from how many from heavenly harmony this universal frame began from harmony to harmony through all the compass of the notes it ran the diapason closing full in man so likewise from harmony from what harmony from heavenly harmony this universal frame began so this is how god created the universal frame this is how heavens or this is how the universe the visible structure of universe was created how was it created from harmony to harmony now imagine you all must have seen a keyboard uh, the organ you all must have seen the keyboard somewhere at least even even if you may not have seen it for real or even if you may not have played the keyboard or organ for real you all know right the black and white keys on a piano you all might have seen that right uh, so if there is anybody who hasn't seen a keyboard you may please message me i can show you the image okay so you imagine there are, there are certain uh, there is a scale of uh, uh, black and white keys on an organ hmm? starting from one uh, key that is the c till uh, maybe after uh, 10 15 20 uh, keys ending with another key hmm? say the c hmm? so from one key to another key from harmony to harmony the whole spectrum of music is there in creation to all the compass of the notes it ran what notes the notation of music hmm? what are the musical notes hmm? musical notes uh, in malayalam or in uh, classical uh, eastern music we say sa re ga ma pa tha ni sa for arohanam and avarohanam you climb up the pitch and down the pitch you have sa re ga ma pa tha ni sa 
these are the notes these are the musical notes the basic in western classical music we have uh, either a b c d e f g or do re mi fa so la ti do so these are the musical notes hmm? so how you say sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa sa ni dha pa ma ga re sa so this is the notes this is one scale ah huh? this is one scale okay so universe was created from the sa to the sa from the lower sa to the upper sa in arohanam we say sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa from the lower sa to the higher sa and then you have sa ni dha pa ma ga re sa from the upper sa to the lower sa so this is the notation daana nammal scale nu pariya so this compass of the notes ah uh, it was the basis for creation and finally the diapason diapason means the entire note sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa sa ni dha pa ma ga re sa the whole notation finally closed in the creation of man hmm? diapason means the entire musical notation closed in man it was culminated or the last creation was man so in the beginning i told you know uh, god first created light separated light from darkness then he separated land from earth uh, sorry earth from uh, land from sea then he separated uh, uh, plants and then he created plants then he created animals and the birds and the sea animals and then finally uh, he created the man so likewise just like you play the notes on a piano on a keyboard or just how you sing the sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa like that from one scale to the other and then back like that uh, he was playing uh, the notes of a music and the musical notes culminated in the creation of man so all together you can see that heavens created the universe through music or rather the universe obeyed the power of music uh, so that it was created from chaos to order to a structure so i hope you have understood whatever we have learned in the first stanza can you please uh, respond in the chat box whether you have understood or not